Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, it's going to be a little bit of a mismatch of different principles and uh, me just messing around with my test bench. So, today's video, the goal is to get the bars flashed on our ASRock B550 Pro 4 motherboard. This was actually picked up extremely cheaply on AliExpress. I'll put a link in the video description. I'm not sure if it's still going to be available. It's about £65, including taxes which is a fantastic deal if you're looking for a B550 motherboard, and this one's actually pretty good. The downside of this particular board is the fact that it doesn't have a BOSS flashback button, which is something that a lot of us have come to rely on quite a lot these days. So what this means is what we need to do is to actually have an older processor on hand just in case it isn't up to date. So if you take a look at the motherboard itself, if you look at the BOSS chip, which is located just to the side of the PCI Express slot, you'll see there's a little sticker on the BOSS chip, and this particular one says P2.10. So that is the BIOS that is flashed onto this motherboard from the factory. Now again, I don't know the history of this motherboard at all. It could be completely updated. It may still be on the first version. This is a kind of refurbished stroke used board. So I've actually got no idea whatsoever. So what we can do is using the information from the motherboard, the BOSS revision, P2.10, what we can do is actually check on the ASRock site and see what CPUs are actually supported out of the box for this particular BOSS revision. That's gonna help us out immensely. Now I'm in a fortunate position here where I have a few processors here which I can try. So the oldest one and the one which is most likely to work straight out of the box is the 3200G. So this is a pretty old processor by now. And it does appear to be actually supported by that BIOS version, which we'll take a look at shortly. The next one I've got is a Ryzen 5 5600. This was also a fantastic bargain on AliExpress. I'll try and link this as well. Around about £70, I think it was. So, yeah, great value for money and a fantastic potential combo. But the real goal is to actually test another processor, which is another one from AliExpress, believe it or not. This is the Ryzen 7 5700X3D. So this is the one I really want to get working on here. So we are going to need to update the BOSS so that it supports the new X3D processors. So we are going to have to update the BOSS to pretty much the latest version. And as always, it, I always recommend updating your BOSS anyway. There's always security fixes and stability things which get fixed in those BOSS updates. So it's worth doing. So we've got our test bed assembled, as you can see. So we've got some RAM on here. We are going to need basically everything. So a power supply, RAM, a processor installed, a CPU cooler, and also some thermal paste, or even though we're just going to be putting a processor in temporarily, it's always worth putting a bit of paste on there just to make sure it stays cool. Potentially, you might just want to put your CPU in on its own, but that might be a little bit risky, so I'm not going to do that. It is more cleanup, but it's certainly worth doing. Uh, potentially, you might want to have some sort of drive in there as well, just to make sure you can boot up into Windows. That is entirely up to you. We will also need a monitor connected, so we've got our portable monitor here as well so we can make sure that we're actually getting some kind of signal. Now the motherboard itself does actually have post LEDs on there, so if there is a problem with the machine actually posting or showing a display, we can look at the decoding and see whether it's the CPU, whether it's the RAM, the VGA, or it is actually booting, but we're just not getting a signal. So with all that said, let's quickly head over to the ASRock website. We'll take a look at the bosses which are supported currently with this version, so that'll give you an idea of what your particular motherboard will support out of the box. And then we'll download the BIOS, get it onto a USB stick, and then we can start putting this together and see what we can do and hopefully find out what BIOS is on there. So this is the motherboard website. So asrock.com forward slash motherboard forward slash AMD forward slash B550, etc. I'll put links for this in the video description just in case you can't find it. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward thing to do, so just make sure you've got the right motherboard. Now, if you've got the B550M or the Wi-Fi versions, then there may be a slightly different version of the website. So do make sure you get the right one. We have got the non-Wi-Fi version here, and it is the ATX version, not the micro ATX. So yeah, do make sure you get the right one. So this is what our motherboard looks like. So let's head down to BIOS. Actually, better still, CPU support list, which is pretty much where we are anyway. So what you can see here is a list of all the processors which the motherboard supports, which is a quite an extensive list. And what you can see on the far side here is validated BIOSes. So if you look at the sticker on your motherboard, it will say P and then combination of digits. There are some processors which will support all versions. They will work straight out of the box. Others will need a specific update. So if we go down to our 3200G, which is this one here, or either one of those two, depending on the stepping version, this requires at least BOSS version P2.00. Now, as we said, on the motherboard, we've got version P2.0. 
0.10. So we've actually come up past that. So that is absolutely great news. So we should be able to do that. And in fact, actual fact, some of the newer processors, such as the 5600, 5600G, etc., they can actually get away with sometimes a slightly older one, so like P1.8. So do check the version you've got on the sticker, and then you can work out what is going on. So if we look for the 5600, which is the other CPU we've got here, that is going to need version 1.20. So if for some reason the 32G doesn't work, we can put in the 5600. No, actually, mine is a 5600, not an X version. So for that, I would actually need version P2.20. So I nearly caught myself out there. So no, it doesn't appear that we will be able to use the 5600 at all until the boss is updated. So let's get the boss update anyway while we're here. So what we want to do is click on BIOS, and we can basically get the latest one. I'll probably go with the beta BIOS, because this is actually quite a lot newer than the previous one. So I'm going to go with this. So download here click on global it says there make sure you read the descriptions and it says to support Ryzen 5000 G series processors it requires to update the boss with a Matisse Renoir or Vermeer CPU so if you haven't got one of those family of CPUs you basically can't um, update the boss to get to here anyway let's click on OK and we'll save this to our Windows desktop should be quite a small file so I think I already downloaded it previous actually. There we go. So right click and we'll choose extract. And we'll dump it to the same place. Now we don't need to do anything to this file. We don't need to rename it or do anything because this hasn't got BIOS flashback. So that is the raw file ready to go. So let's go ahead and find a USB stick. And this drive's actually got a BIOS file on it anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly format the drive. So it's a default FAT32, you do need to have that. And click on start, this will erase the drive. Format complete, excellent stuff. So now what we can do is grab our BAS file, I'm gonna right click on it, choose copy, go back to our USB drive, which is now empty, right click and choose paste. And there we go, there is our BAS file on the USB. So now we can go ahead and eject that one. And now we can head back over to our test bench and get things started. So now we're back to our test bench, and as we've uh, worked out, the 5700X3D isn't gonna work. The 5600 isn't gonna work, the X version would, but that one won't, sadly. So we are gonna have to stick with the 3200G, which actually makes life a little bit easier because I don't need to install a graphics card. So I'm gonna take the processor, get this put on the motherboard. We'll put a little bit of thermal paste actually on to the CPU, and we'll just stick a cooler on the top. It doesn't need to be very firmly mounted down as long as it's able to cool the processor for the limited time we're gonna be using it. So now we've got the system set up. We've got our CPU cooler just uh, placed on the top with a bit of thermal paste there just to take any residual heat away from the CPU. We're not gonna be stressing the system out. It's only gonna be going into the BIOS, but it does make sense to actually have something there. We've got a RAM installed. Yeah, everything's connected up. The USB stick is in the back already. So if the system does boot and we are able to get into the BIOS, then we can go straight into the flashing process if we don't have to do any diagnostic work. We've also got our USB monitor plugged in via HDMI and also USB to power it. And I've got a wireless keyboard and mouse set up so we can uh, navigate the boss should we get that far. So let's try, first of all, starting the system. So we've got our little switch button here. And uh, we have signs of life, which is uh, always a good sign. So now we're looking for the boss to come up on here. I have actually just put a new BIOS battery in as well because it didn't come with one shipped. So uh, yeah, hoping and praying now that we actually get a display at some point. I potentially might wanna tap the delete key just to make sure that it will actually try to go into the BIOS screen. I'm looking at the LEDs on the motherboard there towards the bottom and it looks like we've got a few illuminated. Oh, it's changing now. And it looks like we're gonna get a display, I hope. You will notice that the fan ramps up and down. If your fan stays at a permanent speed, it's likely that it's not gonna work at all. And there we go. We've got the ASRock logo, excellent stuff. So keep on pressing delete. Looks like it's doing yet another reboot. Don't worry too much if it does a couple of reboot loops. It's not entirely uh, unusual. So on the screen saying press F1 or delete to enter the BIOS. And it looks like it's just gonna go straight into whatever's on the USB drive, which is actually installed in the machine, which is uh, probably not ideal. 
and yeah, it seems to go in, into uh, Windows. So I don't want it to do that. We need to access the bar, so I'm gonna turn the PC off. I've now moved the USB dongle in the back just to uh, see if that was the problem. Maybe it wasn't getting a signal. So let's, uh, let's try that again. So I'm gonna keep on tapping the delete key and hopefully we will be able to get into the bar this time. And there we go. So that was probably what the problem was that we weren't actually getting uh, a good enough signal on there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move the camera in a little bit closer, focus on the screen. Uh, I don't have screen capture set up on here, so let's get that closer so you can see what I'm actually doing. Okay, so we can see here, actually on the first screen, it says our UEFI BOSS version is actually version P3.20. So it has actually been updated at some point, a lot newer than the version 2.10, which was on there. But we still wanna update a little bit further. So let's see if it will allow us to update to the latest version. Also, we can check in here, things like RAM, make sure that's all recognized, which it does appear to be. So let's head into the tool section and then we'll go into Instant Flash. And it says here, make sure that BitLocker, if you've got it enabled, is turned off. Or if you leave it on, make sure you've got your backup key and the recovery key for BitLocker. Otherwise, you won't be able to access your system drive after the update. This site is recommended to disable FTPM before updating the BOSS. Otherwise, unpredictable failures may occur. Do you wish to continue? So I'm gonna leave things as they are. We'll just go for it and see what happens. So let's click on yes. And it should automatically pick up the USB drive and the BOSS file. And as you can see there, that is the right version. So click on update. And it gives you another option. Do you want to update? Yes, we definitely do. So let's click on yes. And it will say there, do not power off during UEFI update. Because also with this, this is really important. Make sure you've got some form of UPS or battery backup or a stable power supply because you don't have an option for USB BOSS flashback. If this goes wrong, your board is basically toast, which is one of the reasons why when we do our reviews, we very often praise the addition of having a USB flashback button because you can actually use that to restore a corrupted or a bad flash. So we're gonna let this carry on do its thing and uh, we'll come back when it's done. So we come to the end and the instant flash has come up with a message saying programming success, press enter to reboot the system. So you can do that or you can use the mouse and just click on okay. You should hear your system click off and then it should hopefully reboot. And then we're gonna press the delete key again just to make sure that we can go into the boss and confirm that the boss update has actually taken and it's got the correct version. This reboot may take a little while. Just keep an eye on your diagnostic DLEDs to make sure they're cycling through. Again, it might take a couple of reboots to do memory training and those types of things. We've got a boot screen and yep, we're back into the BOSS. And there we go, so our UFE BIOS version is now L3.41. And it still recognizes our processor, which is excellent processor speed and also still recognizing all of our RAM. So at this point now we can go in configure the boss to our particular liking and uh, we should be able to use any processor we like on here now, which is excellent news. So there we go, there is our boss updated, which is excellent news. Now normally at this point in the video that would be it and I would say, right, we're done. Thanks for watching, don't forget to hit subscribe, like and all that kind of YouTube stuff. But for a change, because these processors have come from AliExpress and uh, well, I kind of doubt their authenticity at times, I'm actually gonna put the processors in to make sure they both work. So if you wanna stick around for that, please do. If not, you've learned all you need to do and you can go on and flash your BIOS. So now we're gonna try the 5600, see if that actually works. I have no idea if it will. So let's uh, get ready mashing the delete key. Hopefully it will work. It's actually hard for me to see the screen. So that's why I'm looking this way because I'm looking at the other monitor because I can't see that one obviously unless I uh, crane my neck around. Seems to be doing something. Seems to be taking its time. Now at this point, most people would be scared, but I'm not because I've just realized the fatal flaw in my testing methodology here because I'm trying to rush things and get things done on video. I've forgotten to plug in the graphics card because this is a 5600, it doesn't have integrated graphics. So let's quickly address that. So now we've got a graphics card installed, let's uh, give that another go. Mashing the delete key. Now, if I'd have looked over at the diagnostic DLEDs, if they're closer, it would have probably said VGA error. 
So let's, uh, there we go. Looks like we're gonna get a signal. Excellent stuff. So now you're gonna get a message. Now, if you ever get this message saying that your uh, FTPM has changed, do you want to update it? Just press yes. And then it will probably reboot anyway, because you're updating the FTPM information. Again, if you're using BitLocker, if you haven't got your unlock key, at this point, you're basically screwed. So now it's updating the FTPM. We've got a boot screen as well. We keep on pressing delete. And hopefully that says, Ryzen 5 5600, six core processor. So that is working fine. So we've got no issues with that one. So let's turn this back off and we'll stick in the 5700X3D because that's the one I'm really concerned about because that one was a little bit more expensive. So let's get that installed and see if that one works. And last but not least, we've now got the 5700X3D. So let's uh, say a little prayer and hopefully this one works. We should be fine. Yeah, looks like the logic is working because the fan speed has changed. That is something to look out for. Keep on hitting that delete key. We are going to get the FTPM notice to say that it's going to be reset because of a new processor, at least when we get a boot screen. That one didn't want to boot up the first time, so I'm not too sure what happened there, but I turned the power off, turn it back on again, and uh, we've now got a display. And of course, as always, we get the TPM reset. So let's hit Y and then it will clear the FTPM data on the motherboard and then it should reboot, in which case we can go back into the boss and make sure that the processor is recognized as a 5700X3D rather than some other just random processor with a shell on it. I think we're looking good. And I can't see from there. Yep, Ryzen 7 5700X3D eight core processor. So this is fantastic news. So at this point now, the motherboard is fully up to date and will be compatible with basically pretty much any processor on the market unless AMD bring out something new. Now I should say this video has been recorded on August the 1st, 2024. So obviously the information may have changed since then. Although I think this platform is pretty much getting towards end of life. So there shouldn't be too many difficulties or too many changes going forward. And of course, as always, if there is any changes or anything you don't understand in this video, please feel free to reach out in that comment section below. Alternatively, you can head over to our Discord. It's completely free of charge. You can join whenever you like to. The link for that will be in the video description. So just scroll down a bit until you see the contact section. But I think that is gonna pretty much wrap this video up. If you've enjoyed it, smash the like button. If you wanna see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.